Chemistry 30, redox reactions, lesson one, identifying oxidation numbers, and Leo goes grr. Now you've probably seen this before. This is your pink sheet. And on your pink sheet, you have a periodic table. And on that periodic table, you've got numbers at the bottom of the boxes. And those are the charge options. Like palladium can be a plus two or a plus four when it takes a charge. And silver can only be a plus one when it takes a charge. And at some point, you probably asked me, oh, what about uh, something like sulfur? What does it take? Is it a plus two, minus two, plus four, or plus six? And I said, don't look at those. Those guys are nonmetals. They take negative charges. We go up to the top of our data table and find the charges for negatives on the common negative ion list. I said, don't look at those numbers at the bottom of sulfur and chlorine and bromine and selenium. Those aren't numbers you're going to use until the end of grade 12. Well, guess what? You're there now. It's the end of grade 12, Chem 30. Here we go. Let's start using those numbers. Before we begin the unit, it is useful for us to develop the ability to assess charges on individual elements within chemical formulas. An element's individual charge is known as its oxidation number. During the course of a chemical reaction, new molecules are formed which change the oxidation numbers of the elements involved. On your periodic table, each element has a series of numbers below it. The bolded number is the charge that elements will most often take. The non-bolded numbers are charges that are possible for the element to take, but not the most common charge for that element. Rules to identify an oxidation numbers. Rule one, lone elements have an oxidation number equal to their charge. So if we have just Ag, the oxidation number is zero. If I've got Pb2+, lead's oxidation number is plus two. And if I have Cl-, then chlorine's oxidation number is minus one. Rule number two, diatomics have an oxidation number of zero. There is an equal sharing of electrons, so these elements have neither a positive nor negative charge. Again, that's diatomics when in their diatomic state have an oxidation number of zero. Rule three, in chemical formulas with multiple elements, the oxidation numbers must total the overall charge of the structure. So if I have KMnO4, K is taking a plus one, Mn is taking a plus seven, and each oxygen is taking a minus two, so that all those charges add up to zero. If I had PO4 three minus, P takes a plus five, each O takes a minus two, so that the overall oxidation numbers add up to minus three. And with NH4 positive, N would be taking a minus three, each hydrogen would be taking a plus one, so all their oxidation numbers add up to a positive one. Rule four, start assigning numbers for elements that only have one possible oxidation number. Then try to fit the remaining elements with oxidation numbers that are bolded where possible. If I was looking at potassium permanganate, I would start with potassium because potassium can only be a plus one. I would not start with manganese or oxygen because they have a number of different charges that they can take. Note. On the periodic table, hydrogen and oxygen have numbers with asterisks beside them. These outline the special situations in which these elements do not take their expected charge. Typically, oxygen will always be a minus two, so I always try oxygen with a minus two. And if that doesn't work, then I try oxygen with a minus one. Same thing with hydrogen. Hydrogen will always be tried with a positive one first. And if that doesn't work, then we try it with a minus one charge. Our examples, Br minus. Well, we got Br there. It's got a negative one charge. So the oxidation number must be negative one. Cl2, it's a diatomic. 
And we said diatomics in the diatomic state have an oxidation number of zero. Example three, BrO3 with a minus one charge. So I've got Br and O. We said we always try oxygen with a minus two charge. And if I've got three oxygens, that gives me a minus six. We know it all has to add up to a minus one charge in the end, so that means Br has to have a plus five. And I checked the pink sheet, and the pink sheet says, yes, Br can take a plus five charge. So Br's oxidation number is plus five. Example four, HSO4 minus. Hey, hold on a sec. I could break that up into H plus and SO4 two minus. That made one complex question, two simpler questions. Hydrogen, all by itself with a plus one charge, must have a plus one oxidation number. Then I look at sulfate. I try oxygen with a minus two. And there are four oxygen, so four negative twos give me a minus eight. So that means sulfur must take a plus six so that it will all add up to a minus two. I look on the pink sheet, sulfur can be a plus six, so that worked out. Example five, CrO4 two minus. I've got chromium and oxygen. Again, I try oxygen with a minus two. There are four O's, which gives me then a minus eight. So I will need a plus six on the chromium so that it will add up to a minus two. And chromium can be a plus six, so I'm good. Now I've got S2O5 to minus. Again, I try O with a minus two, and five negative twos gives me a minus 10. So that means I need a plus eight, because plus eight and negative 10 add up to minus two. So that means sulfur's got a, a plus four. Well, that makes sense, because I need a plus eight from the sulfurs, and there's two sulfurs, so that's a plus four each. Two plus fours gives me positive eight. Example seven, PBCL2. But PB can be a two or a four, and CL can have a whole bunch of different charges. Luckily, we've been doing chemistry for a few years now, and we can recognize that we have a cation of PB2 plus on the front, and an anion of Cl minus in the back. So we know exactly what oxidation numbers these two have to take. Pb is taking a plus two, and Cl is taking a minus one. H2O, I got hydrogen and oxygen. I always try hydrogen with a plus one, and two of those will give me then a plus two, and oxygen with a minus two, and one oxygen then gives me a minus two, and that works out because plus two and negative two add up to zero, and that is the charge on the water molecule. Example nine, NH3. So I've got N and H. I always try H with a plus one, so that gives me a plus three on the back there, and that means that I must have a negative three with the nitrogen because it has to add up to zero. Example 10, phosphate. I've got P and O. So I start by trying oxygen with a negative two, and four negative twos will give me a minus eight. Since the overall charge has to be a negative three, that means I'm gonna try phosphorus with a plus five. I check the pink sheet, it can be a plus five, so I'm all good. Question 11, I've got iodine and oxygen. I try oxygen with a minus two. Three negative twos gives me a minus six. Since the overall charge has to add up to minus one, that means I'm gonna try iodine with a plus five. Check the pink sheet, and yes, iodine can be a plus five. Lastly, example 12. Whoa, that's big. Huh, ah, but you know what? It's got hydronium on the front and carbonate on the back. So I'm gonna split these up into the cation and anion so I can do this question a whole lot easier. So I've got H and O inside of hydronium. Hydrogen, we always try with a plus one. 
So that will give us a plus 3 because we have 3 H's. And O we always try with a minus 2. And I have 1 O, so that gives me a minus 2. And that will work because plus 3 subtract 2 gives me plus 1, which is the overall charge on hydronium. Then I've got carbonate, which has carbon and oxygen. I try oxygen with a minus 2. There's 3 oxygens. So 3 negative 2s gives me a minus 6. And since the charge on carbonate is minus 2, that means carbon would have to take a plus 4 charge. And can it? I'll check the pink sheet. Yes, it can. Carbon can be a plus 4 charge. So why is this important? Well, the oxidation numbers for elements change during the course of a chemical reaction. When an element loses electrons, it is oxidized. Loses electrons, oxidized, Leo. When an element gains electrons, it is reduced. Gains electrons reduced, grr. And this is going to help us remember when something is oxidized or when something's reduced. It is an old chemistry saying that goes, Leo the line goes, grr. Redox reactions are carried out in batteries, where the overall reaction is separated into two half reactions, one occurring at the positive post involving one metal, the other at the negative post involving a different metal. This is a picture of a cell, which is the nerd way of saying battery in physics. This is a cell which shows the flow of electrons as they go from copper towards silver. Now, if the electrons continued to flow like this, there would be a negative buildup in the silver, and there would wind up being a positive buildup in the copper, and electrons would cease to move. Because why would an electron, which is negatively charged, want to go towards something that is negatively charged and move away from something that is positively charged? So in our battery, we put in what is called a salt bridge to offset the charge buildup. So as the electrons flow towards the silver, so do sodium ions. And that will then alleviate that charge buildup in the silver. At the same time, chloride ions migrate towards the copper. And that alleviates the positive charge buildup. And as long as that salt bridge is functioning, electrons will continue to flow until either the copper runs out of electrons to give or the silver no longer requires any electrons because it has already consumed as many as it possibly can. So there's a reaction happening at each post. At the copper post, solid copper is giving up two electrons and turning into copper two ions. So the oxidation number goes from a zero to a plus two. Copper is losing electrons at this post, so therefore it is being oxidized. It has become more positive, and the opposite of becoming more positive is less negative, so that means it has fewer electrons. Less negative, fewer electrons. Loses electrons, oxidized Leo. At the other post, we have silver ion gaining an electron to become silver. The oxidation number goes from a plus one to a zero. So silver ion is gaining electrons at this post. It's gaining electrons reduced, GER. The overall reaction is two silver ions plus one copper atom make two silver atoms and a copper two ion. Note the silver was doubled. It was doubled because silver only gains one electron while copper loses two. So in order for the reaction to completely balance out, we had to multiply the silver by two so that our charges would work out as well. So we have one copper on either side, two silvers on either side. There's an overall plus two charge on the left to match the overall plus two charge on the right. Two terms that are going to come up in the assignment are oxidizing agent and reducing agent. 
So let's see what those terms mean. We already established that copper is losing two electrons to become copper two ion. Since it is losing electrons, loses electrons, Leo loses electrons, oxidation, copper is being oxidized. But what is oxidizing copper? Well, copper is reacting with Ag+. So it is silver ion that is oxidizing copper. So that means that silver ion is the oxidizing agent. Silver ion is gaining an electron to become silver. Gains electrons, ger, gains electrons, reduced. So silver ion is being reduced. But what is reducing silver ion? Well, silver ion is reacting with copper. So it's copper that is reducing the silver. So copper is then the reducing agent. Example one, iron three ion and iodide react to form iron two ion and iodine. Write the balanced half reaction and identify which is reduction and which is oxidation. So our first half, balanced half reaction would have us taking Fe3 plus and turning it into Fe2 plus. The elements are already balanced, so I just need to balance charge. I need to add electrons to one of these sides to make sure the charge balances out. Since electrons are negative, we always add electrons to the side that is more positive. So I will add one electron to the Fe3+. Since it is gaining electrons to become Fe2+, that means this is reduction. Now I- is turning into I2. The elements are not balanced out. I need to make sure I put a 2 on the left-hand side, so I have two eyes on the reactant side and two eyes on the product side. Now I add electrons to the more positive side, which would be the right-hand side, which would need two electrons. So I would have a minus two charge on both sides. Since I minus is losing electrons to become I2, this is oxidation. Write the overall balanced equation. I have to multiply lines so the electrons will factor out. So my top line will have to be multiplied by two so that I have two electrons in my top line to match the two electrons on my bottom line. So when I add them up, the electrons on the reactant side can cross out with the electrons on the product side. I will then write what remains. Notice, when I wrote all these reactions, I made sure that the arrows were lined up all the way down the page. That's so I can clearly see what is on the reactant side and what is on the product side. Now identify what is reduced and what is oxidized. Well, from our reduction line, we see that Fe3 plus is being reduced to Fe2 plus. So Fe3 plus is being reduced. What is being oxidized? I look at my oxidation line and I see that I minus is being oxidized to become I2. So I minus is oxidized. Identify the reducing agent and oxidizing agent. Well, we said that Fe3 plus is being reduced and it is being reduced when it reacts with I minus. So the reducing agent is I minus. What is the oxidizing agent? We said that I minus is being oxidized, and it is oxidized when it reacts with Fe3 plus. So our oxidizing agent is then Fe3 plus. Example two, split the following reaction into its half reactions and identify what is reduction, which is oxidation then identify the oxidizing agent and reducing agent. We'll start with cobalt two ion turning into cobalt. The cobalts are already balanced out. Now I have to balance charge by adding electrons to the side that's more positive. The left-hand side is more positive and it will need two electrons to match the charge on the right-hand side. Since the electrons are on the left, that means that CO2 plus is gaining electrons to becoming CO, 
gaining electrons, ger, gain electrons reduced, so this is reduction. The other half reaction has aluminum turning into aluminum ion. Aluminum is already balanced, but I need more electrons added to the right hand side because the right hand side is more positive. If I add three electrons to the right, then I have an overall zero charge, which matches the charge on the left hand side. Now aluminum is losing three electrons to become aluminum ion. Lose electrons oxidized, Leo. So this is oxidation. Now to identify the oxidizing agent, we said that aluminum is being oxidized. It is being oxidized when it reacts with CO2 plus. So CO2 plus is the oxidizing agent. Reducing agent, we identified that CO2 plus is being reduced. It is being reduced by aluminum. So aluminum is the reducing agent.